So there's some standard food staples that you should always keep on hand so that you can be prepared for any recipe. And joining us now to tell you what those are is personal chef Bill Collins from ChefBill.com. You're going to tell us what we need to have in our pantry to be ready for any recipe anytime. That's right, because this has a couple of advantages. One is the staples, is the basics that you want to keep in your uh, cabinets. It does two things. One is you can throw something together just with these, mm -hmm. or uh, you bring home a few more ingredients, uh, say a steak or some chicken, fish, or whatever, you can use these to make the complete meal. So this really is a good foundation to have. If caught in a rainy day or caught in a sunny day, you're all set to go. No matter what day. No matter what day, <laughs> name of day. But now we have a lot here, so we have a lot to cover. So let's start on this side. What do we have over here? You've got just the basics of your, of your seasonings, your herbs. You've got basil, thyme, oregano, Cumin and chili powder, I think, are very important to kind of give something a little bit of a zip. Mm -hmm. Salt and pepper, and you can either go with already ground pepper or go with a pepper mill, whichever uh, is easier for you. Uh, I like to go with kosher salt, just so it's easier to sprinkle with your hands. And then, uh, believe it or not, vinegar is very important to have uh, because with the balsamic or with the red wine, and the olive oil, you can throw together a salad dressing mm -hmm. or zip up a meal. And the same thing with the apple cider vinegar. So all of those are important to have just as the dry basics. I'm surprised white vinegar is not there. Uh, that's because I left it in my uh, bin over Oh, there. okay. So, <laughs> so we should have white vinegar. White vinegar, because the regular, the, the distilled white vinegar as opposed to the red w yeah. white wine vinegar, uh, that's very helpful not only for uh, cleaning out coffee pots, uh, but it's also used for pickling and used for general cleaning around. Uh, but these are the, the basic ones you want for cleaning, but the white one, you're absolutely right. So for vinegars, cleaning. though. I didn't, now vinegars. you need so many vinegars just to have a good old-fashioned kitchen. Well, in my mind, I think you need at least uh, three or four. The so, yeah. uh, and, 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 but they last forever. You know, you can't say that about just about anything. These do not go bad. All right. So uh, that's a great thing to know about vinegar. So keep it in your pantry. So yep. then moving on from seasonings and uh, spices, we're going to go to the pantry staples. Right. And uh, again, olive oil uh, is great if you're sautéing, throwing together uh, 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 even just a, a quick salad dressing. It's always good to have. I like to have the extra virgin olive oil because it's more versatile. It's more flavorful. So you can use it for everything. So that's a good way to go. Chicken stock, you can make a sauce, you make a soup. Everything here, you can make a soup with just about everything that you have here. Now chicken stock, is that better than a bouillon cube, do you think? Uh, yes, it is for so many reasons. Although you can buy uh, uh, this in just in, in little packets, uh, bouillon cubes tend to be very, very salty. If there's one out yes. there that's not mm. salty, I'm happy to see it. <laughs> but uh, I haven't found it yet. But uh, if you do use a bouillon cube, use more water than it calls for just to break up the salt amount. But in this case, I got a low sodium chicken stock because this way you can add as much sodium as you want or not. Uh, so it's really versatile. If you only need just a little bit, you can freeze it, uh, or you can buy it again in smaller packets. But uh, look for the low sodium, look for the ones without MSG or other additives, and that's a great way to go for your chicken stock. Yeah, bouillon, bouillon cubes, I never end up uh, dissolving it enough, and I end up eating a chunk oh, of bouillon. Oh, nothing worse than that. I don't think it's possible. <laughs> really just like... It's not possible to completely break up a bouillon cube. Yeah, You're absolutely right. Okay, good. I thought it was like... It's not you. Not bouillon. <laughs> it's not you. It's okay, a bouillon. So. <laughs> We've got some grains here, too. Yes, uh, always good to have rice on hand. I prefer brown rice. It's a bit healthier. Brown mm -hmm. rice takes uh, almost 40 minutes to cook instead of uh, the 20 of uh, white rice, but uh, it's still very good. Uh, it's terrific, and it's easy to do. Always keep it on hand, because you can use it for just about everything. Uh, I also like to have uh, similarly quinoa. A lot of people aren't familiar with that. It's a grain. Looks like couscous. Cooks up in about 12 minutes. I like to have it on hand because it's a great source of protein. So say, oh, a vegetarian shows up unannounced for dinner. Uh, they don't have to just have a salad. They can have some protein as well. So that's always good to keep in there. As well as usual, onions and garlic. Those need no introduction. Uh, and a can of tomatoes. Uh, you can go with diced tomatoes or whole tomatoes because with all of this, you can have a quick tomato sauce in about 20 minutes. That's true. And so, a lot of these things don't go bad, so when they go on sale, you can stock up exactly. and hang on to them. Exactly. And this is a oh, fresh, or I was going to say fresh tomatoes, those are good, but canned tomatoes. They're pretty good you too. You never have too many cans of tomatoes in your pantry. Exactly, because they're going to last uh, just about forever. So uh, right. as long as vinegar, but quite quite a long time. And also two more things there: uh, canola oil, which is like olive oil, uh, or I should say, just as versatile, but you can uh, sauté in a higher temperature. And the Pam spray, that's good if you're baking or if you're trying to cut back on the oils a little bit more. Uh, it's always good to have uh, a spray on hand. And now Great. moving over here, it seems like to me baking supplies. Yes. Uh, you've got all the basics. Uh, one thing uh, I have uh, uh, don't have right there is the flour, but flour and sugar, always keep those on hand. Uh, brown sugar, you can go with light brown sugar, dark brown sugar, whatever your preference is, but it's good to have. A little bit sweeter, more of an oomph, because with just about all these ingredients, I can just about put together barbecue sauce. So I like the oh brown nice. sugar in that. 
uh, cocoa powder uh, that's always good to have whether it be for baking or there is nothing like a great cup of hot chocolate. Oh, Unlike, yeah. uh, I'm nothing against the folks at Swiss Miss, but when you put together <laughs> uh, some cocoa, some sugar, and milk, it is heaven. Cocoa, so, sugar, and milk. All right. That's all it is uh, to make yourself a spectacular hot chocolate. And same thing with chocolate chips. All these ingredients here with a little bit of butter, you can have brownies. So, or, or just throw them on top of ice cream or you need that sweet fix, pop a few chocolate chips in your mouth and you're all set to go. So all of these uh, are the basics so to give you a good foundation of doing whatever you need to do in your kitchen. And if anybody ever stops by and you're stuck, you won't be stuck anymore if you have all of these. Not stuck. You can do uh, an entree, you can do a dessert. You're never stuck with these basics. Chef Wonderful. Bill, always a pleasure to have you here. And if Thank you want you. this list of ingredients printed out online, head to our website, mymassappeal.com later today.